Shalom, this is Dr. Siva Mudli. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudli. And you're watching Your oh, Miracle, Miracle Moment. Moment. Mm -hmm. Today on the program, we're going to be talking about healing versus miracles, right? Mm -hmm. Now you may say, but hold on, I thought healings are miracles. Actually, they're not. Healings and miracles are two completely different entities. Uh -huh. And we're going to look at the gift of healing and the, and the working of miracles mm -hmm. and how both these gifts work together and work differently. Amen. So get ready for a very powerful series on your miracle moment. And if there's any episodes that you miss, you can go to our YouTube channel. Right. Now, I want to start off going to the famous chapter in the Bible that talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, there are 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit. You've heard me teach on this many times. There's not nine gifts that people incorrectly teach. There is 21 gifts that the Bible lists, right? And if you want to know more about that, you can go to our online stream and follow the series there. I'm teaching on the 21 gifts of the Holy Spirit currently, and you can get more information from there. Now, I want you to read for me, please, sweetie. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We all know this chapter. Mm. Verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Right. So God says, listen, I don't want you to be ignorant. Mm. I want you to understand what I am telling you right now. Because this is very important. Mm. Don't be ignorant about it. It's very important. Something you have to learn. You it. have to learn it. The next verse, or actually verse number four. Verse number four reads, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So the original language actually says this. There are groups of gifts, but it's one Holy Spirit mm. that gives yes. these gifts to everyone. Yes. Right? Remember, the gifts come from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Right? They come from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that decides what gift you get. Right? It's the work of the Holy Spirit to decide what gifts you get. Now, there are diversities or groups of gifts. And then the Apostle Paul starts to explain to us these different groups. So the next verse, verse number five. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. So the first group of gifts are what we call administrative gifts. They are administrative gifts of the Holy Spirit. The second group of gifts is the next verse, verse number six. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. So the second group of gifts are the gifts of operations or operational gifts. These are operational gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right? They are gifts of the Holy Spirit and they're called operational gifts. The third group is the next verse, verse number seven. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So now watch this. Verse number five, he says, and the group. Verse number six, he says, and the group. But in verse number seven, he says, but mm. the manifestation is for everyone's profit. So, so the reason he starts with but and he doesn't start with and yeah. is because now he's going to explain to us the manifestation gifts. Now, within the manifestation gifts, there are nine gifts, right? Nine manifestation gifts. Now, these are nine from the 21. Yes. Nine from the 21. So these nine gifts are broken up into three groups. Mm. So there are nine gifts broken into three groups. Now, it's interesting. When he says diversity of gifts, he says there's three groups of gifts. Then within the manifestation there are three groups of three, yes. right? We know that everything in the supernatural is in threes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, mm. inner court, outer court, holies of holies, a spirit, soul, and body. Mm. Heaven is made of three parts as well, yes. right? So everything that is in threes is supernatural. Mm. And the manifestation gifts, which is one of the three groups of gifts, mm. has three groups of gifts inside it. Yes. Now he says, listen. Amazing. Verse 8, what does that say, Jesse? For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Uh -huh. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Right, so we see the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and all by the same Holy Spirit. Next. Verse 9, to another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. So then there is faith and the gifts of healing. It's mm. important to understand, it's not gifts of healings. Yes. It's gifts of healing. healing. Right? Okay. By the same Holy Spirit, verse 10. 
to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, uh -huh. to another discerning of spirits. Now watch this. Working of miracles, mm -hmm. then you got prophecy, prophecy discerning of spirits, and to then... Another, diverse kinds of tongues. Right. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Wow. Now, these in total, mm -hmm. from verse 8, 9, and 10, uh, makes up nine gifts. And then, something very important, verse number 11, the next verse. But all these works, that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man, severally, as he will. Now, that's a very important statement. Very, very important statement. You see, religious spirits want you to think that the Holy Spirit is just a dove, is a wind, mm. is a it. Is, it. It doesn't have any um, a mind or will. Yeah, or intelligence. Intelligence. Yeah. He just listens to everything the Father says and he just does it. Mm. But he can't make decisions for his own. Now, that's what religious spirits teach us. But that's not what the Bible teaches us. Mm. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit is equal to the Father and equal to the Son. Yes, he is. Right? All three must be worshipped. All three can be prayed to in different forms of prayer. But all three we can connect to. We are right now in the dispensation of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. It's what we call um, the church age. Mm. It started on the day of Pentecost. Yes. And it will end with the second coming of Jesus. Jesus so we first had in the Old Testament the dispensation of the Father. Mm. That's why the prophet said, thus says the Lord. Because it was, thus says the Lord. It was yes, a dispensation the of the spoke. Father. Then the Bible says, in times past, God spoke to us through the prophets. But no longer. Mm. Now he speaks to us through his Son. Son. So we then had the dispensation of Jesus. And then Jesus said, hold on, I got to go back home. Mm. But I'm not going to leave you alone. I'm going to send another comforter. comforter. So he prayed and asked the Father, please, can you send the Holy Spirit? Mm. And we know that 40 days later, after his ascension, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit arrived. And that started the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Yes, so is. when you now prophesy, you no longer say, thus says the Lord. Because we don't live in the Old Testament. Yeah. You now says, the Holy Spirit says. Mm. Remember, the spirit of prophecy is now subject, subject to, to the, prophet. the prophet. So it's no longer, thus says the Lord. Mm. It is now the Holy Spirit declares. Because the Father is no longer speaking. Mm. It is the Holy Spirit. If the Father was speaking, then the word that was released by the prophet would be a Logos word, in, in which case it would have to be documented and added to the Bible. But Jesus said, and in fact the Bible says, that you can't add anything more to the Bible. Yes. If you do, all the plagues will come upon you, right? So the, the end of the Logos word through, thus says the Lord, was in the Old Testament. It ended there at the end of the Old Testament. Now, there is still prophecy, but it's not Logos, it is Rhema. Mm. And therefore, a, a prophet that's prophesying according to the word of God, that's prophesying from heaven, will always say this, the Holy Spirit says. Yes. They will not say, thus says the Lord. Mm. Right? They will not say that because it's not that dispensation. That is something that is confusing because it is not the Father speaking, it's the Holy Spirit. So this is why we need to always listen when prophecies come about and, and, and discern, mm. is it God speaking or not? Yes. Is it God speaking or not? It's Amen? Now, you can learn more about what I'm teaching. You can do our free online course. It's called Life in the Spirit. Uh, you can register for that and do that course. Uh, our church offers it for free to anyone. Uh, we also have done a series on the 21 Gifts where we've spoken about the prophetic and how to know if a prophetic word is from God or not, mm. how a prophet prophesies now in the New Testament, uh, why the Bible says the spirit of prophecy is subject to the prophet. Yes. Right? We've done that in great detail. And you can go back to our live streams and you can learn from our live streams because we teach that stuff in our live streams. But let's go on. Now, we, we say here that there is all these gifts that's working, all these gifts, but the Bible says to us, the one that makes the decision. Now watch this. It is not the Father. Mm. It is not, not Jesus, Jesus Christ. It is the Holy Spirit mm. that makes the decision what gift you have. Now you got to get this. Mm. Because he has willpower. 
He makes decisions on his own. But of course, the decisions that Jesus makes and the decisions that the Holy Spirit makes, it can be summed up in the scripture where Jesus said, you know, he said at the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, uh, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. But then, mm, not my, my will, but your will, will be, done. be done. So the Holy Spirit and Jesus have a will of their own, mm. but they submit their will to the Father. Yes. And because there's harmony in the Trinity, yes. right? Yet, they are not mindless. The Holy Spirit is not mindless. He has a mind. He makes decisions. And when you operate in what I call the fullness of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit, you can operate in all of the manifestation gifts, all nine. Yes, right? you can. They, they, they started operating in my life all at the same time. Yes. All nine gifts operate at the same time. And, uh, uh, and, and I call it the fullness of the Spirit. Mm. And so you need to reach the level of the fullness of the Holy Spirit because many times we, we, we don't allow the Holy Spirit to be God in our church. Mm. We dictate the time, how long the service is, yes. how long the praise and worship is, when to close. We dictate what God must do. And because we dictate the meeting, it is what we call religion. It can be a charismatic environment. But if we are dictating the meeting, then it is religion. It's not the Spirit of God moving. So when the Holy Spirit moves, He runs the meeting. When he runs the meeting, you get the fullness of God entering that environment. Yes, we must give him free reign. Yes. It's his You know, sometimes we've, we've been taught in religion, in Christian religion. And when I say religion, sometimes we think, hey, you know, the certain denominational groups are religious and the rest of us, we liberated. No, listen mm. to me. When we talk about religion, you can be in the most charismatic church. You can be in the most prophetic church. You can be in the most Pentecostal church. You can be any of the so-called churches on fire and still operate in religion. You can still operate in religion. I'll give you a simple example of religion, right? Watch this. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. There is a belief among Christians, a belief among evangelists and pastors and prophets that in order for God to turn up, in order to preach the word, they must first do Praise and worship, mm. <laughs> right? And, and a lot of this comes from the summary teachings, right? Yeah. Because, we you know, sometimes those guys get a little bit confused by the words as well. And somehow we've been religiously taught. Yes. If there is no good praise and worship, there is no presence of God. Mm. Right? <laughs> that is actually religion. I once had a man came to my church and uh, he asked my worship leader, mm. why do you guys do praise and worship? Then you do the announcements, and then the preacher comes up. I mean, shouldn't you do praise and worship, and it leads into the word? Yeah. Again, that is religion. That is religion. Because you have a religious way in which God must turn up in the church. Mm, mm. And you know, God doesn't follow your religion. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. God's ways are different. So I too was indoctrinated in Christian religion. Yeah, we grew up. I grew up in religion. Well, of course, I got saved very late in my life, right? We'll give God a format to follow. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I got saved late in my life. So I never got to go to children's church. So I was not, not really messed up, you know, <laughs> like you guys. No, I'm kidding. I know children's church is wonderful. It's, I enjoyed it's, it's, children's It's beautiful. <laughs> but I was not indoctrinated so aggressively in church like you guys were because you yeah. grew up from age six in church, mm. right? Now... When I came to church, uh, I had been spending hours alone with the Holy Spirit. Mm. And he had been teaching me from the Word. So when I got into the kingdom and I got into church, I said, now hold on. That's not what the Holy Spirit told me. Yeah. And that's not the way it happens. So let's go back to praise and worship. So I was indoctrinated that you must do good praise and worship. Yeah. Then God will turn up. And a lot of churches invest. And there's nothing wrong in it, but they invest Mm. in uh, uh, not anointed, but skillful players and singers. Mm. They look for skill. They look yeah. for talent. They don't look for the anointing. Because somehow, if my music is good, people yes. will come. And and that's not really come. true. People should not come because your music is good. People should come to church to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Oh. That's why they should be in church. Not for the music. If people are coming for the music, 
I, I, there's something not right with those people. Because you know what? They can listen to a CD yes. and get better quality music <laughs> than going to church. That's right. right. So somewhere we missed it up. In fact, the guys on the CD are probably more talented than the guys who are playing. Mm. So we don't go to church for the music. We go to church to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And we've got to understand that. If I went to church and Jesus didn't turn up, then something's not right here. Mm. Something is not right. Because God is not turning up when I'm going after him. You know, the Bible says, seek him while he may be found. Oh, yes. Right? And he inhibits the praises of his people. people. So if he doesn't turn up, it means there's something not right with the praises. Mm. That's what it means. You know, we've got to, we've got to, Dissect the kingdom because we don't ask these questions. We follow religion blindly. So I used to do these miracle crusades for years, 10 crusades every month, mm. different parts of the country. We'd pitch up tents and I'd usually be a guest speaker for someone. Yeah. And we would do this 10 crusades and great miracles would take place. Many will come to the Lord. And once I was invited to a 10 crusade where I was the guest speaker and always... Always, they did praise and worship. If it wasn't really good, I would call you to come up. Yeah. Right? I would say to you, take over and, and just build the meeting up so that I can come minister. <laughs> because that was the religion I followed in church. Charismatic religion. That's religion. Now, so you would often come up and you would build the meeting if the praise and worship was bad. Mm. But there was one occasion, I think you were pregnant, <laughs> and so you could not come mm -mm. to that meeting. And on that particular day, this was the worst praise and worship of my life. Come on. Have any of you had that experience where you had the worst praise and worship, where the guys just killed, they even killed the ants and the cockroaches, they, even the devils fell asleep, because that's how bad the praise and worship is. So, you know, they, when I called them up to minister, mm. they came up and make ting, ting. They're tuning the guitars. They're tuning the guitars. They are tuning the guitars and they make the Holy Spirit wait. And, and some of them... Some of them don't even sit inside the meeting. Mm. They sit outside the tent. Now he's not my church. I can't tell him, hey, yes. this is the way it must be done. But they sit outside the church. I mean, I, I will never allow my worship team, if they are not inside the service near the mm. stage, I will fire them. They cannot leave the presence of God. Yeah. They cannot go outside and talk. I've seen that many They times. need to be in the presence of God. Otherwise, they're not called to be in the worship mm. team. They're completely disconnected. They're disconnected they're from God. That is someone I won't use because they will bring a wrong spirit yeah. into, the, into the church. Now, watch this. So, you were not there. They killed the meeting. It was flat. Now, I'm waiting to go up and I am panicking. I'm saying, God, what do I do? What do I do? The praise and worship is so bad in this place. Mm. And uh, I said, Lord, I don't, have, I don't have my wife here to help me. And you know, I'm not the world's greatest singer. I don't even know how to, after these songs, how to lead people in worship. You know, I can sing it along in worship, yeah. but I don't, I'm not a, a worship so leader. Then you had to learn the latest songs. The latest songs, yeah. you know. You know, that very silly thing that some Christians do. They run after the latest CDs released. Mm. And, and I, I can't understand them. You need to follow the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you what music, but we never run after the latest music. Because the latest music is more entertaining than supernatural. You must be led by the Holy Spirit to sing. He'll lead you to the music. Yes. Right? Now watch this. So the, the meaning is dead. And I'm panicking because mm. I got no praise and worship. I said, how can I minister without praise and worship? I was, a, I was indoctrinated. Right? I was religious. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me gently but firmly. This is what he said. Did Jesus have a praise and worship session before he prayed for people? Mm. <laughs> Did Jesus have a praise and worship session before he ministered the gospel? And I went like, ah, uh, 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 well, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that was my deliverance. That was my deliverance from religion. And he said, the glory is inside you. Just go up. So the meeting is dead. It's flat. I walk up to the stage. Yeah. I touch the mic. The moment I grab the mic, mm. the glory hit that place. 
hit the place with no praise and worship. And I realized that sometimes I might end up preaching before praise and worship. Yeah. Sometimes I might, and again, I'm messing up. If you're religious, mm. you are struggling to understand what I'm saying. I can do meetings with no praise and worship, and the supernatural will turn up. Yes. Miracles will happen, great miracles, with no musicians. Why? Because religion teaches you a pattern. God does things His way. And the anointing that's inside you, mm. the river that's inside you, is what changes people's lives. There is a river. And remember, there's many ways to stir up the river. Worship is important. Mm. That doesn't mean praise and worship is not important. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's not important. I'm saying we don't follow religion in the church. We follow the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So I've learned over the years that no matter where I go, now I travel to different countries all over the world, but I don't take my worship team with me. I don't have to put them on an airplane and fly them across. Mm. Why? Because I understand I don't need religion. Yes. To, to operate in the supernatural. Yes. I can just even have a CD playing. I can have a CD playing, mm -hmm. you know, with instrumental music, and that's all I need. <laughs> Amen. Now, let's go on. So why, why are we talking about this? We're talking about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Religious spirits think a certain way, but the Holy Spirit is the most intelligent person. Mm. He is the most intelligent person I have ever known, I've ever met. Amen. I've never met anyone that's more intelligent, more powerful. Mm. I've never met anyone who can do the things that he does. Yes, absolutely. It's like, that's just simply the way to say it. Absolutely. It's, he's, he's brilliant. He sees he things. things. He tells things. Yes. He shows things. And sometimes I said, what? What? Mm. Sometimes while I'm preaching, you say, uh, did you look at that scripture? Let yeah. me tell you what that means. In the middle of my preaching, I'm going like, Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Now let me share this revelation with the church. Mm. And that happens like every time on the stage. Every time he's speaking to me while I'm preaching. Mm. And he's telling me stuff. And he's giving me revelation knowledge while I'm preaching. Wow. And I'm going like, whoa, I didn't see that. Now the people can't hear me saying that. Yes. But he and I, we're talking. Mm. So, you know, so it's not just women who could do two things at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah, just, you know, we, we men can also do two, three things at the same time. We can talk to the Holy Spirit and yeah. preach at the same time. <laughs> Amen. Amen out there, men. We're right. known to multitask. Yes, we also multitask. Now, let's go on. Depending on your relation, depending on how much you can trust you. Mm. Because you see, the gifts work on trust. Yes. It works on trust. Can God trust you with the gifts? Amen. It's a question. Amen. If will you become a prostitute with the gifts? What do you mean by that? Mm. Well, suppose God gives you the gift of prophecy. Will you use that gift to prostitute the gift? Mm. Will you go to people and say, you want a word? Well, you give me so much of money and I'll give you a word. Yeah, for selfish right? gain. No. Selfish gain. That's called spiritual prostitution. Mm. And there are people who do that. There are people who will not pray for you mm. unless you pay them money. So they're selling the gifts. They're selling gifts. I mean, yeah. we've had people call our church Many occasions, and this is what they asked. How much does Pastor Silva charge to pray? And we said, what? Yeah. Exactly. Prayer is free. What? We don't charge for prayer. You know, we have a counseling department. We don't charge people for counseling. No. We don't charge people for deliverance. Mm. We don't charge people for healing. For prophetic word. Or prof or prophetic Amazing. word. Yeah. We don't charge people that. Why? Because the gospel is free. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't sow. You're welcome to sow, and we always invite you to sow, but... It's not conditional. If you decide you don't want to sow, that's between you and God. But we will still go and pray for you. Mm -hmm. You know, we will still honor you, even if you have your own, a different mindset. Yeah. But don't come and give us money for the supernatural. I hate that. You know, the, the, the apostles had a man that came and gave them money to buy the supernatural. Oh, yes. His name was Simon, the mm -hmm. sorcerer. And, and Paul was very He was very angry. angry. He was furious. Yeah. He said, may you and your money perish. perish yes. Why did he say such a terrible thing? Because when you come to buy the genuine gift and you come to pay for it, it's spiritual prostitution. Sometimes I see business people do that. Mm. Well, you know, I got so much money. I got this contract, that contract. If you come and pray for me, mm -hmm. I'll give you some money. That's prostitution. I'm not a prostitute. And I will not prostitute the no, supernatural. Never. Amen? Amen. It's free. Come to the presence of God. Humble yourself. And God will touch you. He'll minister to you. But don't you dare come and buy the gift. 
Don't you dare. You must honor people. Yeah. Honor people with the gifting because that's how the blessing comes. That's how you draw the supernatural to you. But don't try and buy the supernatural. You cannot buy it. Amen. Now, let's go on. The Holy Spirit giving gifts, and you spoke about the nine gifts, Jesse, right? Yes. So I want to quickly run through the gifts and give you the groupings of the gifts. And uh, we're going to go deeper into what we're teaching tomorrow on the program. And we're going to be on this program the whole week. Mm. Amen. It's very exciting, the stuff that you're going to learn. It's, it's mind-boggling what you're going to learn. Um, for example, I'm going to teach you how do you know if you have the gift of healing? Just because you prayed for 20 people, they got healed, mm. doesn't mean you have the gift of healing. There's a certain way to know if you have the gift of healing. And in the program, we're going to talk about that. So make sure you stay tuned to all these episodes. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about nine gifts. These are manifestation gifts, right, of the Holy Spirit. There's also administrative gifts and operational gifts. The, the, the first set is called revelation gifts. There's the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, wisdom, the discerning of spirits. of spirits. The next gift is called utterance, utterance gifts. gifts. Tongues, interpretation of tongues and Prophecy. prophecies. The third group is called power gifts. And this group has the gift of faith, yes, healing. The healing and miracles. Mm. I would kind of think that the word of knowledge should actually fit into that group. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe prophecy should be part of revelation gifts. Our faith should be part of the revelation mm -hmm. gifts, but... Word of knowledge should be a power gift because from the nine gifts, the most powerful gift, yeah. the most effective gift, the super, super, super gift of all nines is the word of knowledge. Amen. It's superior from, this is my impression. It is superior to healing. It's superior to miracles. Mm. It's superior to faith. It's superior to prophecy. It's superior to all the other gifts. The word of knowledge is the most superior gift and for many years, when I wanted to operate in the supernatural, I wanted to open the door to the, mm. flood, the floodgates to the supernatural. I wanted to open heaven. I would operate in the word of knowledge. Yes. Because that gift is very different from the other nine gifts. Mm. Very, very different. And it is so powerful that if a person comes up without faith, because the word of knowledge was released, mm. whatever... God reveals, He heals. Heal. Yeah. So I've had cases where I said to people, God's going to heal you. Do you believe it? They said on my face, no, we don't believe it. I said, whether you believe it or not, you're going to get healed. And the person gets healed and they said, I can't believe it, but I'm healed. <laughs> and that's because it was the word of knowledge. Yeah. Now that will not happen with healing, miracles, all the other gifts. It'll only occur with the word of knowledge because the faith in the word of knowledge is in the one releasing it. But... The word of knowledge comes for two levels. It comes to do the miracle on the person, mm. but it comes for the hearers to see that God is in the meeting. So even if the person doesn't have faith, there's a window that's open at that moment, and bam, God comes mm. through. Amen. Oh. Now, we're going to continue this tomorrow on the program, sweetheart. There is so much here to learn in this series. So, so much. It's so, so exciting. This is Dr. Silva Mudley. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudley. We're reminding you that, that miracles are normal. normal. Do God not miss tomorrow's program. Mm. God bless you. Bye-bye.